Well, God bless you. I am Pastor Oren Boyd, Jr. I'm the senior pastor of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. Here with my lovely wife, First Lady Courtney Boyd. And we are coming to you this morning for our Sunday morning worship experience. This is our morning glory. So we're so excited to be able to share this time with you today. And as you come in, you know what to do. Say good morning to us. Make your way down to the front row of the virtual sanctuary. Settle in there. And then send up some hearts and share so that all of those that you're connected to can join in with us for this powerful time of worship and the word. That's right. Make sure that you share, 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 and send up those hearts. We're going to have a great time in the Lord this morning. So good to see all of you coming on this morning. Sister Denise Strickner, Sister Kyra, bro uh, Brother uh, DiCarlo. Um, I saw uh, Sister Donisa. God bless each of you. If you come in, be sure to say hello to us. Let us know that you're out there. God bless you, Lucy. Good to see you this morning. Good morning to each of you. Yes, good morning, Sister Adrian Ramsey, Brother Herbert Long. I know I missed some of you this morning as you were coming in, but God bless you. Welcome to the virtual sanctuary. God bless you, Sister Shay. Good to see you this morning. Appreciate God for each and every one of you, Brother uh, Ezra and Sister Tina. Good morning to you. And Maya. And Maya. God bless you. Good morning. Hey, Joshua, good to see you. Mother Rosie, God bless you. Good to see you, Minister Vivian. God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Sister Brenda Short, God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Brother Reginald, good to see you right on the front row. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Phyllis. Good to see you this morning. God bless Brother Thomas and Sister Buana. Sister Lisa, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Be sure to send up those hearts and share. Text your nephew. Call your niece. Tell it's time for church. God bless you, Sister Dorothy. Good to see you this morning. All of the saints of God coming in. So good to see you today. God bless you, Sister Dora Stevens. God bless you, Sister Harriet. Praying for you, praying that you're feeling better. Good to see you on the front row this morning. I woke up with a song in my heart this morning, Pastor. A song that the old saints used to sing was just another day. That the Lord has that kept the me. The Lord has kept me. Amen. Oh, God, God bless you, Sister Andrea. Good to see you this morning. Yes, God bless you all. All of the saints of God. So good to see you coming in. Making your way down to the front row of the virtual sanctuary. We're going to have a great time today. God bless you, Sister Linda Avery, all the way from Kentucky. The front row stretches all the way from the DMV to Kentucky. Good to see you. Right. Minister Cannon, right. God bless you. Good and Brother Bobby, good to see you. Good morning to each of you. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Time for service. Come on in, Saints. It's service time. Oh, yes. Yeah. I hope you brought your praise with you. I hope you brought your pen and your notepad so that you can take notes. We're going to get into the word of the Lord this morning. I'm still excited about this series of teaching, Authentic. The Lord's going to take us further today. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Tish. God bless you. Sister Valerie, God bless you. And Brother Clarence, Sister Valerie celebrated 65 years, her 65th birthday. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Devin. Brother Amen. Cutler, Mother Cutler, God bless you, good to see you. Make your way to the front row, and I like what Reverend Cutler said. He said he's dancing. All Down the way to, to the, the front, front row. row. <laughs> Mr. Petropa, God bless you. God bless each of you, dear hearts, coming in today. We thank God for each of you. Elder C. Jones, God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you, Sister Lisa. Good to see you this morning. Make your way to the front row. Come on down. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's just a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. The song says, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. One more time. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. We give God the glory. God bless you, Sister Thomasina. 
Happy spring to each of you. Yes. We are yes. now in the spring. That's right. The seasons have changed, but yes, our God has. has not changed. He changed his life. He, yes. Great yes. is thy faithfulness. Glory to God. We give God praise. We sprung forward last week, and now we are in spring. Yesterday was the day where we had um, 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness. Glory to God. And we entered into the spring season, the season of blooming, the season of growth. Glory yes. to God. God bless Great the Peasley family. Good to see you. God bless you, Sister Geraldine Pitts. Sister Carol Ramsey Johnson, God bless you. Good to see each of you making your way to this longest, the Bro, longest front row, row in, in the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Amen. That's Brother right. Paul Davis, God bless you. Good to see you, sir. God bless you, Good Sister morning. Nidale Sproul. We give glory to God for each of you. Glory to God. Looks like Sister Tia is going to preach this morning. She's off running with the word. Go Praise ahead now, sis. Praise. <laughs> Praise God. Got Praise your vaccinations. God. Thank God. Praise thank God. God. I'm going for my second shot here in about a week. Glory to God. I thank God for uh, all that he's doing to bless us and to keep us. And uh, I believe that we're going to see uh, some sunshine. Glory to God. God bless you, Elder Tim. Good to see you this morning. And Sister D. God bless you, First Lady Madeline Robertson from Epicross Church of God in Christ God in Harrisburg. God bless you. I always lady. enjoy to see you. God yes. bless you and your uh, precious husband, Pastor Christian Robertson, dear friends of mine. Always good to see you all joining us uh, for this time in worship. Make sure if you haven't done so, go ahead and send up some hearts and share so that those that you're connected to can join in right. and be a part of this worship experience. I'm telling you, I am so excited about the word of the Lord this morning. You do not want to miss it. And all of those that you're connected to, you want them to hear this word on today. It's going to be a life-changing word, I believe, by faith. And so make sure you call, your niece, text your nephew, tell them to get up, get to church. You need a word in your life. Glory to God. How many of you know that what you need is not more money, even though it doesn't hurt? What you need is not a bigger house, even though it doesn't hurt? A nicer car, even though it doesn't hurt, what you need is a word from the Lord. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Felicia Williams. Good to see you. God bless you. Come right on in, saints. We're getting ready for a powerful, powerful time with the Lord. We had an awesome time in Sunday school this morning. Our Sunday school returns. God bless you, Sister uh, Suzanne, all the way from Los Angeles area. A daughter of Mount Zion. Her father was uh, the second pastor of Mount Zion. What a joy to see you with us uh, today in our worship experience. You know, Pastor, we haven't had testimony service yet. Testimony service? Testimony service is now open. Open. For each and every one to testify and to sing their song. Tell us the goodness of the Lord. Yes, God. Just do it right in the chat box. You can share your testimony. Tell on his goodness. You might not be able to tell it all, but tell on his goodness. Oh, because yeah. he's such a faithful God. And you know how to get that testimony started. First, give me an honest God. He's the head of my life. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to do any of that. Just jump right into the testimony. And tell of his goodness. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Ian Clark. Yes, God bless Good you. Good to see you, sir. No, I can pass to you. No one can pass to you. No one can pass to you. No
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He holds us in the midnight hour. He is a faithful God. Praise God. He's a way making God. He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. He is amazing. Oh, yes, he is. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you want to thank God for those joining us on our conference line this morning, our dear church mother, Mother Florian Callum, Sister Nancy Smith, Sister Renisha Thomas, Sister Dee King, yes. Reverend Joseph Love, and Brother George Williams, and others are still joining in. Glory to God. Thank God for Sister Michelle. God bless you. So good to see you winning again today. Yes. The Lord is yes. faithful. God bless you, Sister Robin. I'm one of our newest members, all the way from Portland, Oregon. A joy to see you this morning. God bless you, Sister Kyra. And take me to the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. And guess what? I just got, we got just all the coming. God bless you. I just got word that Brother George Williams turned 65 today. Oh, wow. Happy what birthday. What an awesome birthday. brother. Happy birthday, Brother George. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Thank God for your testimony of what God has done. Father, oh, praise God. Yes. Glory to God. What an awesome, amazing God we serve. Come on, Tyler. You better go on down to Calvary. Yes, yes. Glory. Yes. So amazing. Mm. And we're not talking about what we heard, but we're talking about what we know, what we experience. He's an amazing guy. Hallelujah. Brother George Morgan is turning 65 today. And Brother Bronco is coming to him today. Happy birthday, Bronco. Bronco Tommy. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. What an amazing God we serve. How many of you know that he's amazing because you don't look like what you've been through? You don't look like where God has brought you from. But God has been so good. He has been so kind to us. He's been so faithful to us. Yes, he is going to the mighty healer. He is faithful. That's right, Mr. Vivian. Glory to God. There is no shadow of turning. Everything we have needed, the hand has survived. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. What an awesome God we serve. We're getting ready for the word of the Lord, just spending some time praising and magnifying the Lord. Happy yes. anniversary, Happy uh, anniversary. Andrea, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. God bless you. Uh, what a wonderful uh, milestone, 11 years. Glory to God. Thank God for you. I know God's going to continue to do great things for uh, you all and your entire family. Just continue to stay focused on Him. What an awesome God we serve. Oh, Lord, we give you the praise. Oh Lord, we give you glory. Oh Lord, we give you glory. Oh Lord, we give you the praise. Oh Lord, we give you the praise. Oh Lord, we give you glory. Oh Lord, we give you glory. Oh Lord, we give you the praise. Oh Lord, we give you the praise. Y'all see first lady directing me? And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, sing, Pastor. I love it. Come, Come on, on, give God the glory and the praise. Well, I don't know about 
with you, but I'm getting excited about the word of the Lord and moving toward the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, as we're giving God the glory and giving him the praise. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you now for this opportunity to come together and to worship on this personal sanctuary. Father, we ask that your glory would fall wherever men and women are gathered today in this personal sanctuary. Let your blessings be upon every household and every individual. We ask you, Lord, to have your way. Open our hearts, Lord, that we might experience you in a special and unique way today. And we'll give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. We give God glory. We give God praise. We thank God for this opportunity to join us to share with you this morning. Again, I'm Pastor Oren Boyd, Jr. I'm the senior pastor of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church of Washington, D.C. We're located at 1112 N Street Northwest in our nation's capital. And as I always like to say, there's no better place to go to heaven from than Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. We just give God praise and glory. Amen. We're so grateful to be able to share this time of worship with you this morning. And what you see is not a put on. Uh, we enjoy worshiping and praising and giving glory to God in a very real and authentic way. We are real people engaged in real worship and doing real ministry. And we bless God uh, for this time. I tell you, this past week has been an awesome, awesome uh, time of ministry from our prayer services through the week, our Tuesday night Bible study, um, our Wednesday um, unscripted Zoom hangout that happens at, on noon, at noon on Wednesday on Zoom. And I'm telling you, it just seems like each week we go uh, higher and higher. Uh, we don't have a script, so we can talk about and share about whatever the Lord puts on our hearts. And it is a powerful, powerful time in, of impartation. I have um, affectionately named those that come on uh, the Wednesday Zoom uh, as uh, the, the disciples. And, and we really do discipleship in that time yeah. in an unscripted way. So if you've not joined us for Zoom, it's a tremendous opportunity to connect in the body of Christ. Um, and uh, also Thursday night, uh, words uh, really uh, would not justify what God did in our Be Harmony mm. Couples Ministry. My goodness. I'm telling you, it was such a powerful, powerful. and impactful time of sharing and just experiencing the glory of God in that setting. Yes. And uh, every third Thursday, we have our Be Harmony uh, Couples Ministry. And if you're married or dating significantly, that's right, Tia, it was it fire. Was fire. <laughs> it was. Uh, if you're married or dating significantly, mark your calendars for 7.30 on the third Thursday of each month and join us for Zoom. I'm telling you, it will infuse your relationship uh, with wisdom, with uh, strength, uh, with purpose, and it will be a blessing to you um, and to your family and will help you to leave a legacy in the earth. We're all, we should all be striving to leave a legacy in the earth with the days that God has given us. Amen. Uh, so it's just a great impactful week of ministry and I'm excited about what God is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about, we have a lot of single people that are excited it's about coming, joining B Harmony. It's and I'm coming. believing God. Matter of fact, you know what? I just move. you all know me. You know that I move in faith. If you're believing God for a mate, if you're believing God to bring someone into your life, I'm not talking about somebody you just picked up at the mall, but I'm talking about you're believing God to put you with someone. Or maybe you're with someone, but you're believing God to move you into that covenant of marriage and a blessing that comes with that covenant. Let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, yes. I want to pray right now for those that are believing you for a God-given companion, someone after your own heart, someone who loves you, someone who walks with you, someone who will learn to love them, oh God, even, oh God, as they are loved, as they love that person. I pray, God, now that you would grant the desires of our heart, that you would begin to bring alignment, oh God, with those that are seeking and believing and standing in faith that you would do it for them. We bind every plan of the enemy uh, to interrupt and to bring confusion. And we pray, God, that you would move by your power, cause it to be so, let it bring glory to your name. And while, oh God, of those who are single are waiting, I pray that you would give them peace, that yes. you would give them purpose, that you would bind every attempt of the enemy to bring depression or loneliness or to bring poor choices and decisions. I pray, God, that you would disrupt now 
and that you would cause your glory to be manifest, even as you perform your good word toward your sons and daughters. We ask it in that matchless name of Jesus. And we know that whatsoever we ask in Jesus' name, that it shall be done because your word says so. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm believing by faith with you Praise that God, God will do it for you. I know that he will. I yes. waited for 44 years before God brought First Lady into my life. And uh, when God did it, he did a good thing. Glory to God. And so I'm believing God with you. We had a powerful time in Sunday school this morning. Uh, our Sunday school has resumed on Zoom. And if you need the link, that information uh, for Sunday school, each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Zoom, we'll be meeting for Sunday school. And um, uh, Elder Tim um, Bullock, who is in charge of our Sunday school, uh, as well as others that work with him, will be teaching each Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. So join in for Sunday school, receive the word of the Lord, and let the word of the Lord uh, bless you and, um, and build you up each Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Well, First Lady, so good to see you this morning, looking uh, mighty sassy in your hat uh, today. God bless you. God bless you. Why don't you greet the people of the Lord? God bless each of you. I'm just so grateful again to be here uh, in the midst of the saints one more time. I count it a blessing just to have breath in my body, activity of my limbs, to be clothed in my right mind. You know how the old saints used to tell on his goodness. Uh, I just feel right churchy this morning, and I'm just grateful for what the Lord is doing. I'm grateful for Mount Zion. Amen. I love my church. Amen. If you will, just go ahead and hashtag that. I love my church. Yes. I am grateful for Mount Zion. Um, as I just think about the uh, saints, when I think about just what Mount Zion means to so many, what it means to me, how it's a safe place uh, for so many, and it's a place where the spirit of God resides. I'm grateful for my church. I love my church. And I, I tell you, it's amazing how Mount Zion is reaching from state to state, even reaching to other countries. It's amazing how uh, the Lord is using this church to be a beacon of light, to, to, to be a beacon of light to those all around the world. And I know that uh, we haven't seen the half of what God is going to do as long as we continue to remain submitted to his will. So I'm certainly grateful for my church. I'm grateful for all of you. I'm excited about this teaching uh, series, Authentic. I've been checking myself every day, just saying, all right, let me do an authentic check. Let me do an authentic heart check. Let me make sure my heart is right. Let me make sure my actions are aligning with the authenticity of Christ. I love that the word challenges us but it doesn't condemn us, but it, it it challenges us to come up higher. So I'm certainly grateful for the word of, of the Lord. I'm grateful for our pastor. I'm not only not only do I love my church, but I love my pastor. Glory to God. I, I'm certainly grateful for him and I'm grateful for his sacrifice um, and how he pours out to the people of God. I'm excited about the word today. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless each of you. Uh, certainly thank God for our first lady and um, all that she does to help us to build ministry. And let me just say this. Um, I'm, we're very serious about being the kingdom for real. Amen. This is not a game. This is not a show. We're very serious about allowing God to perfect those things that concern us. And so if you're out there and you're not a part of Mount Zion and you're serious about um, allowing the love of God, the power of God um, to impact your life and to make you what you should be. Glory to God. Um, then you ought to come along and take this journey with us if you're Amen. not a member of another church. Amen. And uh, God will bless you uh, in a tremendous way. Uh, God bless Brother Wally. So good to see you. God, God bless, bless you uh, all. Uh, good to see Brother Trey Kell, one of my, uh, I call him a son uh, from Worcester, Mass. He comes on from time to time and joins us. And I want to share a little testimony. We're going to move forward in a minute. But Brother Trey Kale, many, many years ago, came to me, and uh, he, when he was just a boy, I was at his church running a revival, and he came to me in the parking lot and said, I want to be a preacher like you. 
<laughs> and uh, it touched my heart. I never forgot him saying that to me, just a precious young man. And we thank God for him. I heard him bringing the word on Facebook uh, maybe a year or so ago. Beautiful. And Beautiful. Uh, just thank God for what uh, what God is doing um, in the life of people. We have some exciting news that I'm going to share at the end of service today. Uh, I'm not going to share it quite yet, but at the end of service, we have some very exciting news. There are some awesome things that are happening behind the scenes at Mount Zion. Yeah. Um, and we are making strides and moving forward in so many different areas of the ministry. Uh, we're not resting during this time of quarantine, but we are building capacity mm -hmm. in order to advance the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage each of you uh, daily to seek to build capacity in your own life to advance the kingdom of God. Glory to God. And whatever you need to do to build that capacity, give yourself to doing that. Well, I'm excited about the word of the Lord. We've talked enough uh, without going to the word. And so we're going to open up the atmosphere, just spending a few moments in worship as we get ready to share the word of the Lord. Get your notepad, get your pens out. Uh, if you've not shared yet, take a minute, go ahead and share so that those you're connected to can join in and share with us in this time of the word of the Lord. Take a minute, just do that now. Share and uh, let's worship and open up the atmosphere and get ready for the word of the Lord. Let it bring transformation into the lives of these your people, O oh God. 
Those are the lessons today, and may the lessons uh, in the days to come. I pray, God, that you bring forth a bountiful harvest through your word. Come to thy glory, and we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. We welcome the Lord into the space as we prepare to share the word of the Lord on today. We are in a series of teaching entitled Authentic. And uh, we've begun this teaching. And for most of you know that have been walking with us for the past year or so. We've had a monthly theme uh, that we've shared. But as the Lord has moved us into this theme of authentic, I can tell you with uh, all that God is depositing into my spirit, uh, we will not complete this series um, in March. Um, uh, we probably won't complete it in April. Uh, we'll be here for some time uh, because I believe that this is prophetically perhaps the most important uh, area of focus for the body of Christ in this particular season. Uh, that we would learn and grow um, in our authenticity. Um, the, the premise uh, through which we have engaged in this area of study, um, which um, I believe to be uh, so true, and I think if you just consider the evidence that you will be compelled to agree, that the harvest is requiring something different from the church. There are uh, people that would believe and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, but the church has become a stumbling block to the unbeliever. The church has become a stumbling block to the unconverted. The church has become a stumbling block to the unchurched because they have a difficult time seeing alignment between uh, those of us who identify with the church and the principles that the word of God teaches and shares. And so I believe that this is tantamount to uh, the church being effective in this season and beyond, that we would just learn to be real, real people, that our worship would be real, um, and that we would do real ministry, that the church's focus would be on meeting the needs of uh, humanity spiritually, socially, and even economically. That would become the driving force uh, be behind, um, behind uh, the work that we do as believers. And so I believe that we're called to this. And uh, we are engaged in this teaching because I want every person who's connected to Mount Zion, particularly those who are members, to understand that our mantra is real people, real worship, and real ministry. And you cannot get to real worship without being real yourself. And you cannot get to real ministry without the revelation that takes place within authentic or real worship. And so there is a progression that takes place in the life of the believer, when we come to Christ, uh, he begins to deal with those things in us that are inauthentic. Uh, we begin our conversation in John chapter four. Now I know some of this may get a bit boring for, for those of you who are not in love with the word and the ways of God, uh, but for those of you who really want to go deeper in God, I believe if you engage in this um, conversation, if I might just call it a conversation, uh, that, that you'll find uh, great purpose and meaning in your life. And so we began our conversation in John chapter four, where we see Jesus um, intentionally encounter this woman at the well. He deals with all of the inconsistencies in her life. And there he reveals himself to her as the Messiah, gives her um, a new life. Now, notice, if you will, uh, that in scripture, uh, when uh, God moves and he does something, it's not... Uh, a, a, a philosophical theory. When God does something, it's not a philosophical theory. It's a, an actual reality that manifests itself in the earth. So when God gives a sinner new life, that person is no longer a center, a sinner. They, they have new life. And that new life is a life that is rooted and grounded in Christ. And so they begin to move according to uh, the dictates 
of Christ. That's how they begin to move and operate as Christ would lead them. Uh, so when we get saved, this is not a philosophical, theoretical experience to where now we say, well, I'm in Christ and then we go about our business living as we were. No, when, uh, when a man is in Christ, the Bible says that old things are passed away. That's not theory. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. So there's literally a transformation. When we are in Christ, we are not the same as those, glory to God, who are not in Christ. If we're going to be effective as witnesses, there must be a difference. The Bible says that the believer sets a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. The believer is very intentional in uh, living a life that is different from those that are not in relationship with Christ. They're very conscientious followers uh, of the teachings of Jesus Christ. So if Jesus teaches it, then a true believer is very conscientious and uh, the words of Jesus uh, even go beyond being aspirational. Not only do I aspire to the words of Jesus, aspire to the words of scripture, uh, but I actually live it, not through my own strength, but through the strength of God. And so we begin dealing with uh, this woman at the well in John chapter four and uh, our technicians. I wanna just thank God for those that are working uh, on the various parts of uh, making ministry happen, our technology team, they're putting the scriptures up for you. But in John chapter four, we see Jesus expressing this great love um, individually toward this woman. He doesn't discriminate against her uh, based on her ethnicity. He does not discriminate against her based on where she's from. He does not uh, categorize her based on her life experience. Uh, he does not um, shun her based upon the mistakes that she has made. He does not judge her based upon her current condition, but he brings a message of love hope and faith to her. Now, the first new scripture that I want to introduce to you uh, today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know this as the love chapter. Uh, the first essence of uh, being authentic we've talked about on this past week is authentic love. The believer must work a walk in authentic love. That, that love is a self-willed, unconditional love. That's how we as believers must walk it. Um, and if I can just speak to you in a fatherly way today, uh, I did dye my hair, but I still would like to speak to you in a fatherly way today uh, as one who has gray hair, though it's hidden, most of it. Um, but um, it's time out for us making excuses for not walking in unconditional love. It's time out for that. It's time out for us uh, picking and choosing uh, when we will uh, surrender and submit to love and when we will not. As believers, we must mature and grow up to where we're always walking in love, regardless of how uh, difficult the challenge may be. I understand, uh, in fact, if you think about it, the very uh, image of God's love uh, is shown through the difficulty of the cross. The difficulty of the cross becomes the imagery through which we understand God's love. The agony of the Garden of Gethsemane becomes um, the experiential uh, 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 example of how difficult it is to embrace love. It's time out for us to uh, make excuses for not embracing love. Instead, we must find our way to Gethsemane and before the Lord, before our Father, cry out and ask him to help us to walk in real and authentic love. Uh, there are some challenges in your life. Hear me today now. There's some challenges in your life that only true authentic love is going to solve. Uh, there's some bridges that have been burned. There's some chasms that have been created. Uh, there's some tension that has lingered simply because we won't choose love. And so we must grow up and allow the love of God to be perfected in us even as we see Jesus demonstrate that love um, in, uh, in his example and this experience with the woman at the well. Now, I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. 
Uh, you should read the whole chapter. But in the New Living Translation, verse 13 renders, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Three things last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Uh, the King James Version renders love as, um, as charity. Uh, charity is gratuitous, right? It is, that, um, it, it is um, a gift that is freely given. So we started with authentic love. And today I want to move to authentic faith. I want to have a conversation with you around the subject of authentic faith. Now, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes that whatever uh, God does, it is forever. Whatever God does, it's forever. So here we see in 1 Corinthians 13, these three elements that are forever, uh, love, hope, and faith. Now, believers, um, if we do not have authentic faith, it's impossible for us uh, to be effective witnesses. We cannot be effective witnesses if our faith is not real. It is authentic faith that produces real people. It is authentic faith that produces real worship. It is authentic faith that produces real ministry. It is a faith that is real. It's not false. It's not phony. Uh, it's not borrowed. It's not mimicked. But it's something that is real, that uh, is actual. It is something that is such a strong and compelling force that it influences and affects the way that you do everything. That's real faith. And I think it would be easy if you stop and think about it with me for a moment to understand that inauthentic faith would become a stumbling block to those who do not believe. In other words, one who confesses to have faith in God, but conducts or lives as if they have no faith. How, if you are an unbeliever, would that life influence you to accept faith? If it is confessed by one who lives as if they have no faith or confidence toward God. That is why, brothers and sisters, and uh, oftentimes people who are not familiar with Pentecostal holiness, sanctification, um, uh, these types of terms that are identified within the body of Christ, many people that are not familiar with them become intimidated. Uh, years ago, those that were part of the holiness movement were called holy rollers. They were thought to be cultic. They were thought to be people that uh, didn't have good sense because they seemed to defy what had been accepted as norms for human beings. They believed uh, that God uh, was so powerful that an experience with God could uh, cause you to live a life that was set apart from the common sins of humanity that you wouldn't be subject to the authority of that. And, and uh, even church people thought that was strange. And even today, people that are not familiar with Pentecostal holiness will reject the message of sanctification, of, of being set apart unto God for his service and living a lifestyle that glorifies God. Why does it glorify God? Because it is consistent with his word. It is consistent with his truth. It is based on what God has spoken and declared. Now, uh, let me give you the definition of faith. Uh, the Greek word for faith is pistis, and, and this word uh, gives a true understanding of that goes beyond our pedestrian understanding of faith. Faith is not about um, human belief or confidence that you place from a human sense, but faith is a divine persuasion. In other words, there's something that happens that persuades you in a divine way uh, to cause you to believe or to be convinced of something. This is not something you decide. It is not an intellectual or an emotional choice. Faith is something uh, that uh, comes from God, is worked out by God, 
and then demonstrate it in man. Faith is something that comes from God, is worked out by God, and then is demonstrated in man. Understand that. We don't, uh, we don't uh, choose uh, alone to believe, but we choose to respond to the work of God that is compelling us to believe. I hope I'm making sense to you. Faith is a divine persuasion, and it is distinct from human belief or confidence. That means, brothers and sisters, in order for your faith to be real, you have to have an experience yourself with God. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. You could have been raised in church. Your grandmother could be saved. Can I talk to some of you young people that maybe grew up in church? Your grandmother might be saved. Your, your grandfather might be saved. Your mother and father might be saved. But you have to have an experience with God for yourself because faith comes through a work of God. It is God convincing you and bringing you to understand who he is. That's why if we go back to John chapter 4, and we see this encounter that Jesus has with the woman at the well. He reveals himself as the Messiah. He revealed, God bless my cousin, Brother Jonathan Bass. We're praying for you, Brother Jonathan. Um, you see this experience. Jesus reveals himself to the woman at the well as the Messiah. He says, I'm the one who can come into your life and change everything about it. Now, if you read that passage of scripture in John, you can see that the woman was constantly uh, having a conversation to escape the power, the authority, the convincing uh, of Jesus of Jesus Christ. She she was she was reverting back to what her issues she had. She was reverting back to how she had seen church done. She was reverting back to uh, division between uh, the Samaritans and the Jewish people. All of these different things. But Jesus said, "Let's just get right down to the point." He said, "If you knew who you were talking to." If you knew the water that I have, you wouldn't be worried about this well. You wouldn't be worried about your home situation. You wouldn't be worried about where church should happen. If you knew that, you would bring the conversation full circle and just deal with the fact that I am the Messiah. I'm the one who can save you and deliver you from anything that is hindering you. In other words, Jesus is revealing himself to her to bring her into a place of authentic faith, real faith, not churchy faith, not, 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 not faith uh, that has been handed down from generation to generation. I'm talking about faith that comes through a face-to-face -face experience with God along the wells of your life to where you come to know God for yourself and you are convinced and you then can go and tell those that you know, come see a man who has told me everything that I have done. I'm talking about an authentic faith. Jesus reveals himself to her to move her from church as usual, to move her from the way that she had seen the church before. Glory to God. Don't you know, my dear brothers and sisters, there are so many people that the barrier for them to come to Christ is what they've known and what they've seen in church. So rather than to come to Christ, they want to talk about everything that they see in the church uh, that has been wrong. All of the divisions in the church, all of the different sects in the church, all of those who are in the church who don't live as the word of God teaches. And that becomes a distraction for them to come to faith. But when they have that face-to-face -face experience with God as the woman at the well had with Jesus, they will, they will be transformed and they will go back and tell others, you got to see the real God. Oh, glory to God. Brothers and sisters, if you're under the sound of my voice today, you, I want to challenge you to cry out to have that type of experience with God to where your faith is real to where your faith is not tossed about with every wind of doctrine, to where your confidence in God is not shaken by every trial and every difficult situation that you go through, that you understand that God is bigger than your challenge, that God is bigger than the problem, that God is bigger than the period of time that you have to wait to experience what you're believing God for. I want to challenge you to let God swell your faith up 
to such a dimension that you're able to be strong and to do exploits. Daniel said, they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. When you come to know your God, when you come to comprehend the measure of his love for you, when you come to understand how great God's love is and you begin to see him for who he is, then the faith that you have is not a churchy faith. It's not something you just heard and said, well, maybe I better get saved so I won't go to hell. No, 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 no. It is a conviction that sits on your chest like an elephant and causes everything about your life to change because you know that there is a God. You know that you have a creator. You know that you're not simply matter and sales. You understand that you are not just physical matter, but God is in you, that you are his creation crafted in the mind of God before you ever became physical matter. You understand that you're not an accident. You understand that you're not a, 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 a comma. You understand uh, that you're not irrelevant, but you understand that your life, you man of God, you woman of God, is intentional and came out of the mind and the spirit of God. That God has a plan and God has a purpose for your life. And because you understand that, it transforms the way that you interact with this physical world that we know because you come to know who God is and you're not moved by what other people say. You're not moved by the circumstances you're confronted with. You're not moved by those moments where in your your physical man, your physical woman, you feel discouraged, you feel beat down, you feel defeated, but there's a greater end of you that is letting you know that I am the Lord thy God. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. As long as the earth remains, I shall be with you. And you are in an authentic place of faith. It comes from God. Romans chapter 12 and verse number three tells us that unto every man, God has given the measure of faith. God has placed in us the measure, a consistent measure of faith. That is the capacity to receive from God and to believe God. God has placed that in every man, the capacity to receive from God and to respond to him. It's in every man, the capacity to receive from God and respond to me. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. Glory to God. Can I just teach the word of God to you today? Glory to God. Romans chapter 10. And I want to look first at verse number. Glory to God. Let's look at verse number 17. It says, so faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news of Christ. Now we, we, we've heard it, now faith come by hearing in the King James Version and hearing by the word of God. So there's a connection that our faith comes by hearing the word of God. The word of God is the revelation of who God is. You will never become a true believer. You'll never move in authentic faith because you shout it. You'll never move in authentic faith because you speak in tongues. You'll never move in authentic faith because you uh, uh, clapped your hands um, on two and four or one and three. You'll never move in authentic faith uh, because you get excited over the emotional accoutrements of a worship experience. You'll never come to authentic faith through that. The only way to come to authentic faith is through engagement with the ear gate, the word of God. In other words, uh, God begins to reframe your understanding of life through his word. That's the only way you're going to come to authentic faith. I don't care what type of musical program. I don't care what type of, 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 of high tech uh, audio visual uh, experience that is brought into the church service. I don't care how awesome the band is. I don't care how charismatic the preacher may be. You will only come into a place of authentic faith by engaging the word of God and allowing 
the word of God to reframe your understanding of the world. Glory to God. You'll never come to faith by trying to seek out and search out through scientific means who God is. You will never come to authentic faith by trying to understand if the origins of faith is in Jerusalem or Ethiopia or Egypt. You will never come to authentic faith trying to figure out if God is black, God is white, God is male, God is female. You will never come to authentic faith by going through all of these intellectual and emotional pursuits, but you will only come to true faith by the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's the only way that you will come to authentic faith. It says, so faith come from hearing. And that is hearing the good news about Christ. That's the gospel. The good news about Christ does not begin when Jesus came through the birth canal of Mary. The good news of Jesus Christ begins in Genesis chapter 1 when God said, let us make man. You must understand that in the beginning was the word, John chapter 1. And the word was with God. And the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. That's John chapter 1. You must understand that. See, the word was in the beginning. So the good news of Jesus Christ is that he was in the beginning, that he pre-exists time. That's the good news about Jesus Christ. The good news about Jesus Christ is that he is God. The good news about Jesus Christ is that he did come to earth as the son of God. The good news about Jesus Christ is that he is infinite. The good news about Jesus Christ is that he lived a sinless life. The good news about Jesus Christ is there was no inauthenticity, no guile that was found within him. The good news about Jesus Christ is that he did suffer, that he did die, that he did go to the grave, that he did rise again, that he did ascend up into the heavens, that he did sit down on the right hand of the Father to sacrifice no more, where he makes intercession for his sons and daughters both day and night. And the good news about Jesus Christ is that he he is going to return again for those without spot nor wrinkle that are a part of his blood washed church and that we shall ever live with the Lord forever. That is the good news about Jesus Christ. Glory to God. When you read from Genesis to Revelation, it is the good news about Jesus Christ. So it is the good news. Faith come by hearing the good news about Jesus Christ. Look at verse 18. But I asked, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. So here we see that capacity to receive to every man was given the measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Verse 18 here in Romans 10 says, but I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. You're hearing the message now. They've heard the message. They've heard about Jesus Christ. They've heard. The message has gone throughout the earth and the words to all of the world. But I asked, did the people of Israel really understand? Yes, they did. For even in the times of Moses, God said, I will rouse your jealousy through people who are not even a nation. I will provoke your anger through the foolish Gentiles. And later, verse 20, Isaiah spoke boldly for God saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. But regarding Israel, God said, all day long, I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious to Israel. When you're reading the Old Testament, dear brothers and sisters, and you see Israel, that represents the church folk. That represents the religious folk. That represents the people that through their religious experience have become inauthentic. Glory to God. The people who God has become so familiar to them that they refuse to hear his voice. They refuse to allow the spirit of God to bring conviction into their life that they might be challenged to change, challenged to go in a different direction. The word of the Lord says they've heard, they've even understood, but they've been disobedient. They've been rebellious. 
You see, authentic faith is not just about belief and understanding, but it is about our response. It's not just about belief and understanding. Authentic faith, it, it goes beyond your belief system. It goes beyond your understanding of the things of God. It has to do with your application and your response. That's why James said, let me show you my faith by my works. In other words, my response to what I believe, my response to what I understand is what qualifies my faith as authentic. Glory to God. I hope I'm helping someone here today. As you see this and understand that, authentic faith, glory to God. Uh, it, it, it moves us to a place to where we go beyond our belief and our understanding and begin to live our life as a response to what God says. I want to say that again. It goes beyond what we believe and understand, and we begin to live our life as a response to what God has said. In other words, if God has declared something to be so, we live our life as a response to what God has said. If God says that we are to love one another, we live our life as a response to what God has said. Am I helping anyone here today? Yeah. Glory to God. In other words, if God says that we should be holy, we live our life as a response to what God has said. We make alterations as a response to coming to alignment with the word of God, what God has declared, and we begin to move in the things of God. And so our life becomes a response to what God has spoken and what God has declared. That takes us back, dear brothers and sisters, to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number three. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was formed at God's command. So our life becomes a response to God's command, not out of obligation, but out of love, out of devotion, out of commitment, out of a desire to please him and to glorify him out of a desire to magnify him in the earth that others will be able to see who God is because we are a response to what God has commanded. Whew, glory to God. It is our response, not just our belief and understanding. You see, brothers and sisters, when we resist, I'm coming home, God's word, we reject faith. When we resist God's word, we reject faith. And we also reject the fulfillment of God's will for our life. When we reject what God has spoken, we are rejecting his will. Now we understand that Jeremiah 29, 11, so that we know that he knows the thoughts he thinks towards us. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. When we reject faith, we reject that peace. We reject that expected end. We reject those plans that God has crafted for us even before the foundation of the world. When we reject faith, we reject the blessings and the favor uh, that rests upon those that walk in faith. When we reject our faith, we reject what God would do in the midst of impossible situations. We reject the miracles of God. We reject the signs and wonders of God. When we do not walk in faith, we reject the blessings that come through God's unconventional means. When we do not walk in faith, uh, we, we reject uh, the favor that God would put upon us even if man does not want to see us experience that favor. We reject God's word, we reject faith, and uh, we reject the fulfillment of God's will for us. Some of us have not advanced into the place God would have us because we have rejected God's word and in return, we have rejected faith. You see, authentic faith is about hearing, faith come by hearing, trusting your confidence in who God is. That's Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, glory to God, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So we hear what God says, but then we have to put our trust in God. Not just in what he said, but in God. We must put our trust in God, that he is who he says that he is. 
God is not who science wants to frame him as. The great compromise that many believers wanted to reach uh, 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 when it came to evolution and, 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 and our biblical belief of God being the creator was intelligent design. Intelligent design is the, the sense that there was some force or some idea that is behind creation. Well, no, God is who he said he is. He is the creator. And through his miraculous means that go far beyond man's finding out. The Bible says that God's ways are past finding out. I don't care how far science advances. And I thank God for science. I'm not fighting science. I thank God for science. It has its place. But no matter how far God's, no matter how far science advances, the ways of God are beyond finding out according to scripture. And I dare to stand on the word of God. Let the word of God be true and every man be a liar. So you must trust God. Lord, I trust that your word is true. Uh, I've got to come in and close. One of the most critical things we must do today, dear hearts, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we must uh, be like the church at Berea. The Bible says that they study the scriptures both day and night to see whether or not the things that they were taught in church were so. Glory to God. They, they engage in the word. They study the word. And we must study the word uh, so that we can come to trust what God has said. What God has said must become more real to you than what you're experiencing in the physical realm. Remember, I shared with you last week that what's in the physical realm is, is, is it's true, it's, it's real, but it's incomplete. There is a spiritual realm. Glory to your name. There is a spiritual realm that completes what's happening in the physical realm. That's why we have the natural, but then the supernatural. The supernatural is when the spiritual realm descends into the physical realm and gives understanding that is sufficient to move forward. Glory to God. Now, there's some things uh, that we will still know in part and prophesy in part. But when the spiritual realm comes into the natural realm, glory to God, it breaks down carnality. And we must, dear hearts, break down carnality in the body of Christ. We, we've got to become spiritual people with the spiritual mind, with the spiritual insight, with the spiritual outlook with spiritual desires and spiritual movement and spiritual purpose. Glory to God. So hearing moves us to trusting. Trusting moves us to embracing. Embracing moves us to living. As we embrace God's word, we begin to live out God's word. Oh, God. We begin to live out God's word. Can I say something to some that may be listening to me that have embraced a message of weakness as a believer? That where well, I'm saved and I just, you know, I, I, you know, God forgives me and you know, God will forgive. Or, you know, if I if I commit sin, God will forgive. That, that that's true. God does forgive. But can I say something to those that have it, it embraced uh, this view of a uh, of a believer? that is justified only in theory. The glory, the glory of God rests in obedience. If you want to see the glory, the revelation of God's glory, it rests in obedience. In other words, becoming a response to what God has commanded. That's where his glory rests. The glory means the full weight of his presence. You are experiencing God in a different dimension, in a different realm. You have moved into an authentic place of experiential walk with God. Glory to God. It's real. It's authentic. It answers questions. It settles uh, concerns. It convinces you beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is who he says he is. That type of faith, that type of authentic faith becomes transformative in the world. Glory to God. I've got to come in. Authentic faith refuses to justify sin through human weakness. Authentic faith refuses to justify sin through human weakness. You know, it's very damaging 
when those of us who confess to be followers of Christ justify sinfulness by simply saying that, well, you know, we're weak. Because then, in essence, what we're saying is, is that God is a liar and that he's not a keeper. He says that I'm able to keep that which is committed unto me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, in essence, if we justify human weakness, we put a stain on the confession of Christ. It's not that we were weak. Sometimes it's that we lack commitment in our faith, our moving in what we believe. Authentic faith will not justify sin through human weakness. It chooses rather to magnify the righteousness of God. Authentic faith magnifies the righteousness of God and his power to save, deliver, and to keep now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Authentic faith embraces the challenge of holiness. It embraces the challenge to be ye holy for I am holy. Yes, yes we are in the human sinful nature but God is able to keep us. And progressively, as he perfects our faith, we come to different dimensions and levels of holiness, living unto God, living unto his glory, taking joy in doing what delights his heart. Our confidence in God's word must surpass our confidence in the seen world. The Bible says the just shall live by his faith. It is our living unto God that demonstrates that our faith is authentic. Hallelujah. An authentic faith becomes a fragrant faith. It becomes an impactful faith. It becomes a faith that converts unbelievers. It becomes a faith that brings uh, into the kingdom those that would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got to close here. But without an authentic faith, we will not be able to reach the harvest. It takes more than a church experience. It takes more than knowing church protocol. It takes more than having your name on the roll. It takes more than a mother or a father or a grandparent that knows how to pray. It takes you having an authentic experience with God through his word that brings you to true faith authentic faith, real, genuine confidence toward God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. As you know, we'll continue this conversation on Tuesday night to go deeper into authentic faith, but I want to challenge you today, glory to God, to open your heart to a fresh experience with the Lord. I don't care how long you've been in church, but I want you to know that there are dimensions in authenticity of your faith. See, testing brings forth glory to God. Testing brings forth that authentic, mature faith. Let me read you one more scripture. I, I, I'm sorry. But let me give you James chapter 1. Glory to God. It says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, this is the word of the Lord, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. 
and they are unstable in everything they do. That's James 1, verse 3 through verse 8. Make note of it. Go back and read it. Yes, you'll go through some testing, but it's God refining your faith. That's what tests are about. It didn't come to destroy you. The enemy does not have the power to destroy you, to destroy your family. The enemy does not have power to just take over your life. No, God has given you victory. First John chapter five, I believe it's verse four says, and this is our victory. We have overcome the world. Faith is our victory that has overcome the world. Faith, our authentic faith moves mountains. Our authentic faith causes us to overcome every test and every trial. Glory to God. I want to pray for you today. That the Lord strengthen our faith, perfect our faith. That we go beyond churchiness. We go beyond, hallelujah, just having a church experience to having a God experience. To when no matter what comes your way, you're convinced by the power of heaven itself that God is on your side and he will cause you to obtain victory. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Lord, it's our prayer today that you would grant us, oh God, to walk in authentic faith, real faith, real confidence towards you. Lord, don't let our relationship with you be shallow based upon something that we've heard that has never been tested. But let our walking with you, Lord, be based on the hearing of your word the embracing of your word and the living of your word. Lord, when we're tested, if we stand on your word, rather than to revert to human tactics, that's how we know that you're real. Because you prove yourself, oh God, and you manifest yourself according to what you have spoken. You are the God that never fails. Sometimes we have to wait on you, but you never fail. You always come through and you're always true to your word. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each one under the sound of my voice now and those that will hear this message in the days to come. Bless each one, oh God, to experience you in such a special and unique way. Let your glory be revealed in their life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, somebody's struggling today. I feel them in my spirit. They've been in church for a long time, but they've never had that experience like the woman at the well had. I pray, God, today that you would visit, make a purposeful journey, oh God, through their country. Meet them, Lord, at the well of their life. Manifest yourself and reveal yourself as the Messiah. I pray, God, that you would do it, that glory would come to your name. I pray, God, that you'd save, that you would break the chains of bondage, that keep us, oh God, in the chains of religion, not knowing the freedom of relationship with you. Let, oh God, our relationship lead us to a faithful and devoted religious life. But let the relationship come first. God, break every chain. Open the eyes of the blind. Open the ears of the deaf. Cause us, oh God, to see and to hear the things that you are showing us and speaking in this hour. The Lord will glorify you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody just type it in for me. Authentic faith. Real faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Real faith. Authentic faith. Glory to God. When we're talking about authentic, we're talking about real. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you're listening to me and you're not saved, I want you to know that the word that I've shared with you today is the word of the Lord. And God loves you so much. And he wants a relationship with you. And if you open your heart, the divine influence of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And God will begin to prove himself to you and show himself to you right where you are. Doesn't matter what you've done. Hear me, dear brother, dear sister. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter where you've come short. If you open your heart, the Holy Spirit will begin to work 
and that divine persuasion, God will begin to show you who he is. Glory to God. And simply say this prayer with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm sorry for my sins. I open my heart to receive the Lord Jesus Christ to save me and to help me to live in relationship with you. I want to live for you, oh God. I open my heart to your word. I open my heart, oh God, that I might receive authentic faith, that I might be a son or a daughter from this day forward. Do it for thine own glory. Help me to live for you. And I will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer right now, you are saved. And God will continue to build your faith so that day by day you'll come into the knowledge of who he is. If you made that commitment, send me an inbox. I want to connect with you and give you resources to help you to walk out your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. God has great plans for you. And it's not about your past, but it's about your future. Send me an inbox and say, I gave my life to Christ and I need help walking it out. Glory to God. And if you're not a part of any church family, you need to be a part of a real community that's authentic and seeking to please God. Won't you let this be the day that you respond to the calling of God and join the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church? We'll do you good. We'll walk with you. We'll love you, and support you, and do what we can to help you on this journey. If you want to be a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church today, you don't have a church home, you're not a part of a church family, and I don't care where you are in the world, but if you're listening today and you want to be a part of this church, you're being impacted by the word of God and by the atmosphere of love and of faith and hope that you sits here, send us an inbox today and say, I'm in. I want to be a part of the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. We'll connect with you and provide you with tools and resources to help you to live out this life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, glory to God. Thank God for his word today. I pray that you've been blessed by the word. We'll continue this conversation Tuesday night. Uh, it's time for us to, uh, don't leave me. I've got an announcement, but it's time for us to give. Glory to God, it's time for us to give. And so, you know, we have two ways of giving. You can mail your love gift into the church and your tithe, as many of you do. And you see the address there on the screen. 1112 N Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20005. And you can also go to Givelify. It's a mobile app uh, that you can download on your Apple or Android device, and you can give your tithe and your offering uh, through Givelify. And uh, I want to appreciate God. You continue to remain faithful with your tithe and your offering. And I want to challenge someone who's not uh, been faithful in your tithing and giving. Make today a fresh start and watch what God will do as you prioritize him in your giving. You'll see the favor of God on your life. It's a principle to live by. Glory to God and God will bless you uh, as you are faithful in your tithe and your offering. You'll see him make ways and provisions for you. Glory to God. Well, glory to God. I've got one announcement that I want to share with you. Today, as we're springing forward, first lady is coming back in. We are launching our Mount Zion mobile app. This journey began several months ago. Brother Ryan Reed uh, a part of our technology team uh, started and developed our first app. And we've been working over the past months with uh, migrating that to a new vendor because of some things that we want to do. We're building an architecture to do some great things. And so today uh, we are launching and it's available for download in the Apple App Store and the Android App Store. We are springing forward with our mobile app. So we have a quick video and then I'll make some more comments about that. Uh, before we close out service. Hello, and welcome to the new Mount Zion Pentecostal Church app. In order to enjoy the front row experience, download the church app on your Android or Apple device. Once in the app, please create an account, then feel free to look around. When the home screen loads, you'll find some key clickables that share specific information about our ministry. Are you looking for a past sermon? Then take a look below at the media tab and click archive to enjoy messages starting with the Peace of God series. 
If you can't remember when the next gathering is, don't fret. Check out the events tab to see what ministry engagement is on the horizon. We all know Pastor enjoys the NLT Bible version, and now we can follow along right here in the Bible tab. If you haven't noticed, we also have a new way to give. Click the Give image on your home screen and create a one-time account. From here, you have easy access to sewing at your fingertips. Enter the amount you'd like to give, supply a payment method, select your fund, choose your frequency, and give. It's just that simple. This new format allows us to steward more of the funds we receive, and if you'd like, you can even help cover processing fees. In this app, there's ease of use for everyone. Everything you need is an arrow or a click away. Please take a look around, watch, listen to the words, take some notes, and stay connected. We enjoy serving you and progressing as real people with real worship doing real ministry. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful. And a shout out to Sister Kim Collette who has been working on this project with the vendor uh, for some time to get us to where we are. Now, this is our 1.0 launch. Uh, there will be several revisions and updates as we're pushing content to it to make it exactly what it should be. But I want everyone who can to go out and to download that app today. It's the church app. And when you get in there, you will find and register for Mount Zion. Download that app. Give us feedback. If you need help or assistance downloading the app, uh, I know some of you may not be very... Um, uh, may not use technology a lot, uh, call the church at 202-289-0808, leave a message, and someone from our help team will get back to you to help you to download the app. We're springing forward with our mobile app. All of the messages and content, all of our live streaming will be there, and we're making it so simple. Um, it's our plan to give all of our seniors to make sure they have a tablet where they can hit two to three clicks. It'll only be two to three clicks and they can be right in the live stream service. We're doing everything we can to make sure those who are not, uh, who don't use technology a lot are not left behind. We want them to be able to have the full experience. Um, and so go out and download the church app today and we will uh, be pushing more and more content out. And if you didn't get a chance to see last Sunday service because Facebook took it down, it's in the app. Glory to God. So you'll be able to see last Sunday service in the app as well. And the tutorial that you just watched, we'll post that on our Facebook page as well. So you can go back and watch that and just hear the details on how to access that app. Absolutely. And tell all of your friends that are connected to Mount Zion to go out and download the app. There's going to be many wonderful features coming along, uh, chat features and all different types of features. Let me also just make a note. The giving feature is there, uh, but we really aren't launching that until the 1st of April. We'll, we'll get it if you give to that means, but we're going to have a later launch for that. Just a few things that we're working out to make sure that it flows smoothly. Uh, but we've got so many different features that are going to be launching through that. It's going to be such an exciting, exciting time. So go out, download it today. Tell all your friends, download the Mount Zion Pentecostal Church app. Uh, it's going to be lit. We're going to have a wonderful time just fellowshipping in the virtual world. Did Pastor just say lit? Yeah, Whoa. Pastor said lit. <laughs> isn't, lit. Isn't that a thing? Isn't that what people say, lit? Absolutely. Somebody it's... tell me, do people say lit? Is Pastor... No, you're fine. I'm it's, fine? You know, okay. it's kind of old school, but we're going to still it's, say it. It's kind of old. Well, I'm, mean, supposed say, the... I'm supposed to say it's litty. Well, for the super young people, that's old for them now. So, so Tammy said she loves it. But... She's talking about... But for us, anyone 40 and over, we can still say lit. <laughs> Praise God. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Get out and get some sun. Love y'all so much. Tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. prayer. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. Stay connected. God's got you. Chris LeBlanc said I'm good. Here we go, Pastor LeBlanc. Hey, daughter, out there in Kansas City.
Love you all. Come on, y'all. Authentic faith. God bless you, Sister Suzanne. God bless you. God bless you, Plakisha. Good to see you, daughter. Come on, Albert Cummings. Come through. And big shout out to Ryan Reed, who is holding us down. Thank you, Ryan. We love you. Thank you for holding us down. Hey, y'all, we're getting ready for Easter. Resurrection Sunday is going to be awesome. Now, Resurrection Sunday is going to be lit. That is right. The God be the glory, Reverend Cutler. Keep praying for us. Glory to God. God bless you, Tiffany. God bless you, Sister Althea. God bless you, Sister Buana. God bless you, Sister Sante. Brother Carlo, bless you, son. God bless you, Sister Carol. God bless you, Sister Harriet. Keep getting stronger. God bless you, Sister Dorothy. God bless you, Sister Maria. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Thomas. For God be the glory. Listen, I want to challenge you. If this authentic series is blessing you, go out on your social media page and tag, hashtag authentic, hashtag Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. Share, share, share. There is a word we want to impact as many people as we can with this authentic message of Christ. So go out, hashtag authentic, hashtag Mount Zion Pentecostal Church. Amen. God bless you, Sister Shirley Campbell. Always a joy to have you with us. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful day. Love you so much. See you this week.